so today I'm going to be showing you how to design a backing for your Chromebook in Fusion 360. Um, this is the general Fusion 360 window that you'll see. Um, you have kind of all your commands across the top. You have the parts that you've built on the left, and you'll have a timeline on the bottom. And right now all of these are empty because we haven't made anything yet. Um, so the first thing we need to do is we need to create a part or a component that we want to make. So we will right click where it says unsaved. We're going to click new component. And you'll see this component appear here. Um, and this little dot next to it means that it's the active component. It's the component that we're actually building for. Um, so we'll double click on this to change the name and we'll call this computer case demo. Um, and this will be the demo because you'll build your own later. Um, and since I've created the component, I'm actually going to save this now. I want to make sure we save frequently. So up here, this little icon that says save, or you can hit control S to save. And I'm going to call this computer case demo. Um, the location, you can just leave this as my first project master. And we'll click save. You should see the title up here change so that you know that you've saved it. Um, and now we're ready to begin our design. And we want to make sure that while we're working in this, this is the active component that we're working on. Um, in order to start building our computer case, we're going to need to create a sketch. So I'll go to the sketch drop down menu. And if for some reason you don't see the menus that you need, you can control click. Oops, not there. Um, where is it? Um, you can control click anywhere on this panel that's not on an icon and say show all hidden panels. And that should give you all the panels if you're missing any or you accidentally drag any off. Now that I'm ready to make my sketch, I'll click this sketch drop down. I'll say create sketch. And this will create a new sketch that'll be kind of the base design of our computer case. When you click that, you'll see these three yellow panels pop up and this is just asking on what dimension you wanna do your sketch. So you can choose any of these. I'm just gonna choose the bottom one. And when I click it, I get transferred into this sketch view and you'll see this palette pop up with all these options. If this is in your way, you're welcome to close it and open it back up, whatever's easiest for you. If you want to move around, you can click this little pan command and then click and drag to move around. I personally like zooming in and out with two fingers on the mouse pad. You can also use this zoom command. And with that, you can also, you can click and hold to zoom in and out. If you're ever really far away from something, you can say zoom to fit. Uh, you can click this fit button and that'll zoom you in on whatever you're drawing. We're going to start with the basic shape for our um, our case, and that's going to be a rectangle. So I'm going to go in here. There's a lot of options, but a two-point rectangle is the easiest. And this little R here is saying that instead of going in this menu, you could just press the R button to get into it quickly. So I'll say two-point rectangle, and you see the little icon next to my mouse. I'm, in, I'm going to start this. You can start it anywhere. I'm going to start at the center, and I'm just going to draw a rough shape, and it'll tell me the measurements for each side. So now I've got the rough shape for my computer case, but I'm not sure it's the right size. Um, so we know that our Chromebooks are about 20 centimeters tall and 30 centimeters across. So I'm gonna go back into the sketch menu and say sketch dimension, which allows me to give specific dimensions for parts. Oops. And again, you can see the icon next to my mouse. And now I can go in and I can sketch the dimensions. So first I want to do the height. And so if I hover over this, you see it turn this like highlighted blue. So once it's that highlighted blue, I can click on it and then move my mouse out and it'll let me draw the dimension. Um, and right now it's just telling me what dimension it is. But what we actually want it to be is about 20 centimeters tall. So you can type in 20 cm and press enter. And this suddenly gets a lot taller. On the bottom, we want this to be 30 centimeters, so I'll highlight, see this mouse over to where it's highlighted blue. I will click it, move the mouse down, and I want to make this 30 cm. And now it's, it's kind of hard to see my entire thing. Um, so an easy way to fix this is if you look on this bottom toolbar, and this middle one says fit, and you can say zoom to fit. And it'll zoom me out, 
If that's still not enough, I can pinch my fingers together on my trackpad to get a good view of the whole thing. So this is my general shape of our computer case, and now we have the dimensions we want. Um, I don't really like a, like a hard rectangle as my shape, so I'm actually going to make these edges a little bit softer. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to say sketch, and I'm going to use the fillet command. And what this does is you take a corner, and it lets you round the corner off. And you can drag this around to change how much you want it to be um, filleted. I think around 50 looks pretty nice. And then I'm just going to do this to each of the edges. So I'm going to do that over here. 50. Sketch. Fill it. Boom. And for some reason it changes to 40, so I'm just going to set this to 50 again. And then I'm going to do one more. And I'm going to set that to 50 as well. And now this is looking more like the basic shape of a computer case I want. When you build your own case, you're welcome to change kind of the outer edge shape however you want, as long as it fits within the overall rectangle. And you can see if you look around, it has all the dimensions I put in. So I said 20 centimeters, and the default showing is in millimeters, so it's saying 200 by 300. It's telling me how far I filleted these in. Everything looks great. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit stop sketch because I'm done with the basic shape of my case. And if you look up here on the top right, you'll see this little box. And this actually lets you control the angle from which you're looking at things. So if you click this little corner, you'll kind of look at it from that corner. You can sort of just drag the box around. If I go back to the top, if I don't like the angle, you can click one of these arrows to rotate it. Um, so I'm going to look at it from this angle. And this is the basic shape, but it doesn't give us that depth that actually we will have when we're laser cutting our wood. So I'm actually going to go and give this some depth. And the way I do that is I'm going to go to Create, Extrude. And then when I mouse over this shape, it kind of highlights the whole shape. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to say extrude it for 3.75 millimeters, which is about the thickness of our wood. And if I press Enter, I now get kind of this flat case looking object. So great. So now we have the shape we want. And if you ever want to look at the pieces we've created within this component, we can create, click this little drop down. The bodies are the 3D objects. So that's kind of the shape. The sketches are the thing we drew around it. Um, the sketches, this little blue light means that it's hidden right now because we've made it a 3D object. If we want to see it, we can just click that light and we'll kind of see the outline of the sketch again and we can turn that back up. So now we're ready to start doing some of the actual designs on our case. Um, so what we're going to do is we're actually going to create another sketch, which is going to be all the design. So we'll say create sketch. Um, we can just click on top of this face. So when we highlight it, it says we're going to be drawing on top of this. We'll go back into our sketch view. And now it is time to start adding kind of the important design parts. So I'm going to start by creating the text. And I am building this computer case for Lex. So I'm going to just put Lex's name on there. Um, so I'm going to go back into the sketch tool going to go down to text. Um, you can click anywhere. It doesn't really matter because you can move it. So I'm going to click right here. Uh, I'm going to do Lex's first name in all capitals. Um, height controls how big the text is. So I'm going to make this about 30 millimeters tall. That seems like about the right size. Um, but now I notice I kind of want her name to go vertically. So you can grab this little bar. I'm just going to rotate that until it reads 90 right here. So it's at 90 degrees. And then I'm going to drag this right about there. And I'll, I'll add some dimensions to fix that later. But if you want to move this around, it's that. If you want to rotate it, it's that. You can have it at the angles you want. Um, and then when I'm ready, I'm just going to click OK. Great. So now I have Lex's first name. kind of want Lex's last name. So I'm going to go back. I'm going to sketch text. I'm going to click anywhere. I'm going to write her last name and 30 millimeters again. So all my text is the same size. 
I'm going to flip that around until it's at 180 degrees um, to get that right side up. And then I'm going to kind of move this. I want this over here to where the corners of those two boxes are kind of touching. I think that's the look I want to go for. If I, for some reason, want a different font, I could just go through this and pick a different one. Um, but I think I'm pretty happy with Arial. And I'm going to press OK. So now we have Lex's name. The next step is... I have kind of two images in my mind from my empathy interview with Lex, and I think one the first one's a river, so I'm actually going to just freehand sketch out a river. Um, and I want my river banks to be sort of uh, curved lines without a specific structure, so I'm going to go and just sketch, and I'm going to say spline, and I'm going to use a fit point spline. Um, and what that allows me to do is create this kind of long curved line. I'm just going to start somewhere on this edge, and you see this little X along my mouse, that means I am intersecting with the edge. I don't want to be off the edge because I want it to start all the way at the edge. So I'm going to start right about here, and I'm just going to create a kind of flowy path like that. And then once I have gotten all the way to the other edge and I saw that blue X when I clicked, I'm just going to click this little check mark. And so now I have the edges of one edge of my river, if for some reason I don't like the curviness or I want to move around, I can click and drag. Oops. Oops, if I press escape, then I'll get my mouse back, and then I can click and drag this point. And if I double click on this line, and I want to I can grab these green ones to change how it curves. So if I want it to be a little bit curvy or a little less curvy in one direction, I can do that. Um it's really important that when you look at this, you see all black dots. If for some reason you saw a white dot, that would mean that it wasn't connected to the edge. Um, and that's going to cause problems for us later down the line. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create the other spline for the other side of my river. So I have two sides. So I'm going to start right up here where you see that blue X so you know I'm connected to the edge. And I'm going to go here and then there and then around here. And then over there. And then I'm going to click this check mark. And I've got my river. And I'm actually going to. Oops. So now that I'm done, I'm still in spline mode. I need to press escape to get out of it. And then I'm actually going to kind of widen it. Oops. I'm going to kind of widen this right here. I'm going to kind of bring that up right there. Really smooth that out a little bit. Um, and it might be a little hard to tell that it's a, it's a river. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add some like rock shapes in and around it. Um, and this is a good chance for you to explore some of the other commands. So you could make some circular rocks. So you could grab any one of these circles. I really like center diameter circle. Um, and I could just put like a little, little pebble right there. A little pebble right there. Uh, but not all rocks are perfectly round, so I'm actually going to check out some of the other commands. Um, if you're feeling adventurous, you could try the ellipse command. Um, you could try some of the slot commands. Um, personally, I really like just creating my own shapes, and so I really love the spline command. Um, and I found that if you use the spline command and just click three points, you can get this kind of nice like rock shape. Like That to me looks a little bit like a rock. That's a little bit like a rock. That's a little rock-like. And so I'm just creating a bunch of these. And as you can see, these are all black dots on the line to let me know that it's fully connected. You will see a white dot right around here, and that's just the center of your circle. And it's letting you know that that's what the center is. Um, Great, so I've got my river, I've got some rocks in it. If you want, you can add some rocks around the outside, you can add some rocks, you know, a little pebbly bank if you want. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do that right now. Um, so I've got my river. The other big object that stood out in my mind from Lex's empathy interview 
um, was the Lex really loves like camping and like camping was a big part of her life and still is. Um, so I'm actually going to draw, I'm going to sketch a tent on here for her. And I am not that good at drawing by freehand a tent. A river was pretty easy. Tent's a little hard for me. Um, so I'm actually going to bring an image in that I found on the internet and I'm going to sketch around it um, to help me draw like a, something that looks really nice for Lex. So if I go online um, and I open up a new tab and I just go to Google and I'm going to say tent icon. I'm just going to look this up, go to images. Um, I actually really like this one, so I'm going to click on it. I'm going to right click or control click on the image. Say save image as. I'm going to call it tent. I'm going to save it in my downloads. I actually did this earlier, so I need to replace it, but you won't see this. Um, and it's downloaded, so I can go back to my design. I can say ins I can say insert attached canvas. I want to insert it right here. So I'm going to click this face and it'll highlight blue. Then I need to go and I need to select the image. So I click this little image box and it pulls up um, my computer's file system and I'll go to downloads and tent. And let me minimize that so I can see what I'm working with. So first, it's upside down, so I'm gonna flip that one. And then it's a little too big, so I can grab this little corner and kind of shrink it down and grab this and move it right there. Um, and now it's in a position and a size I like, so I'm just gonna press okay. And so my image is on there, but this actually won't do anything to my design until I sketch over it. So I'm actually gonna zoom in on this a little bit um, and the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm kind of, I'm just going to add all the straight lines I can do. So I'm going to say sketch line. Uh, I'm going to go from here to there and then press check because I can't do a straight line around this corner. Um, so I'm going to come back and do all the corners. Um, and it really helps me to actually zoom in a bunch. I find that really helpful to get the lines really nice. Uh, and I'm going to go from right around there to there. And again, press that check. And then zoom out a little bit so I get this full thing. And I'm going to go from right around here all the way up there. And press that check. And then... I'm going to go from right around oops, zoom in a little bit, get it right there to right there. And again, click the check because I'm done. Okay, so for this part of the image, and I'm just outlining all the black parts, um, I am, and so I've got all the straight lines, and now I need to connect all the corners. And so I'm actually going to use the arc command. And this is called a three-point arc, and I'll zoom in. And now I'm going to click this white dot to make sure it's connected there. I'm going to click that white dot to make sure it's connected there. And then I can control how arcy it is. And I'm just going to try to fit it as best I can, which looks like right around there. And this white dot just tells me where the center of my arc is. And you can see that it's fully connected. So now I'm going to go over here and do the same thing. So one end of the arc is on this white dot. And when it's on the dot, it'll show you this little blue box. And on that one, and then again, I can control how steep the arc is, and I want it right about there. I'm going to go down and do these other two corners. And click that one, click that one, bam, right there. Click that one, click that one, and right there. So I'm done using the arc command, so I'm going to press escape to no longer be using it. And now when I mouse over this box that I've enclosed, it should highlight like this. Let me know that it's an enclosed structure. And that's really important for us making that 3D as a single object. 
Um, so I've done this one, and now I need to do this part over here. So again, I think I'm just going to try to do all the straight lines at once, because that's going to make my life a lot easier. So I'm going to say, press escape, sketch, line. I'm going to start up here at this tip, and just all the way. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and go... Right around there, and press the check. From here to there, press the check. From right there, straight up into the corner. And I actually don't have to press the check because it's just two straight lines. So I'm gonna just go down there, and then I'm gonna press the check. And you can see that that's already connected. Uh, I need a straight line across the bottom, and press the check. The straight line up to there and press the check. I want a straight line across that. And I'm actually just going to do a couple straight lines here because I'm feeling a little lazy. Boom. Okay, so that's that part. And I think I just want to add two straight lines right here. So I'm going to do this. So right about there, and then all the way back down to here and press the check. And if this isn't about right, I can kind of click and drag these around. Um, and zoom out. So now I need to do, so I'm looking for these white dots that aren't connected. So I have two here, two here two here, two here, two there, and two there. So I'm going to need to use some curves to connect all these. I think I'm going to use an arc for the first couple. So I'll go sketch, arc, three-point arc. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to click on that white dot, click on that white dot. And there we go. And that's actually a little bit too far out. So I'm actually going to click and drag this and click and drag that to kind of touch that up a little bit. And that, see how that brings it a lot closer. Um, I'm going to go over here. I'm going to go sketch, arc, three-point arc, click on that white dot, click on that white dot. Beautiful. I'm still in the arc command, so I can just click on that white dot, click on that white dot. That's pretty good. Um, I'm actually going to hit escape, and then click and drag this over a little bit to fit that a little bit better. I want to do this corner over here, so I'm going to say sketch, arc, three-point arc, click on this dot, click on that dot, get that little toe. These two are a little bit longer and more complicated, so I'm going to press escape. I'm going to go to sketch, spline, fit point spline, and I'm actually going to try to fit this along here. And with the fit point spline, the more touchy your shape is, the just like the more zoomed in you want to be. And then once I connect back to this dot, I'll hit the check. And that actually looks pretty good to me. So I'm just going to leave that. And I'm going to do this one. Um, and I'm still in the spline command, so I can just click along and check. And this is actually not as good, so I'm going to move. Oops, I think. Oops, I need to escape. And then I can move this down here. And I'll zoom out and let's look at what we got. So I've got this as one contained shape. I've got that as one contained shape. That is the tent I want. <sighs> All right. So I think this is starting to look how, how I want it to look. Just to make sure, I'm actually, I have the image still in here. Um, and I'm just going to hide that. And so if you look in your canvases, I have the tent image. And I'm just going to click this little light bulb to hide it. And I can always bring it back, but right now it's going to be hidden. Um, okay, so this is the sketch that I want for Lex's computer case, um, but it's not 3D yet. It doesn't really look that cool. It's just a bunch of, you know, lines and dots and still looks pretty ugly. So I am done sketching. I'm going to hit stop sketch. I can look at this from an angle. And the way I want to do this now is I actually want to drop some of the images into the face of my case to make them like an inscription on the surface. 
And the way I'm going to do this is again, I'm going to use the modify. Um, oops. I'm going to use modify press pull. And I'm going to click on all the things I want to go in. So I want the tent to go in. I want the river to go in, but I don't want the rocks to go in. They're going to stay up. And I want the text on Lex's name to go in. And I'm going to say, so we made our material 3.75 millimeters thick, thick. I want this to go into the surface one millimeter, so I need to make it negative one. And you see how this kind of turns red that lets you know it's cutting. And you can see the operation right here says cut. It's cutting into the surface. So I'm going to press OK. And I'm going to look at it from an angle. And you see we have the river inscribed. We have the tent inscribed. We have Lex's name inscribed. This looks beautiful. This is something I am ready to give to Lex as the case for her computer, or at least get her feedback on before I make changes. Because I worked really hard on this, and it's beautiful, I'm going to make sure I save it. It's just going to ask you to have a version description. This really isn't important. You can just hit OK. I've saved it. Um, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to call that a wrap on this video. There'll be further videos with instructions if you go back to the document that linked you to this video.